All right, welcome in. It is the Three Guys Talking Ball podcast. I think it's episode 104. Is that right? Three. Does that sound right? I think three. it is 103. 103. Okay. 103. Hard to keep track. I kind of debating here if we uh if we even want to keep uh keep counting them. I thought the 100 was cool because, you know, we could da- do some able to name episodes after certain players. Um now it's like it's it's just getting tough to uh think of uh think of names or redoing it and reusing them might have to go back and try to remember and look and see what we had for each episode and named it. But the, uh, the college footballs, the go ahead, Grant. I was just going to say, you could say, Hey, you know, Hey, it's one Oh three. And, um, you know, instead of using whoever used last time for one Oh three, be like, Hey, let's, you know, now use another three this time and be like, Hey, it's the, what Jeff George episode when he was in Washington, the Redskin, <laughs> the Redskin Ram. Yes, the Redskin Ram, the uh, Warren Central uh, product, who was uh, I yep. believe teammates with Jason Whitlock. And uh, yeah, Whitlock um, talks about him as he's how they're essentially best friends. Yeah, well, he talked about how he's like one of the most talented. and He's going to defend him till he dies. Yeah, and uh, uh, but you know, last week. We said this was a loaded week of football as November ramps up. It is separate. It's separation Saturday for the next four weeks. And we had some great weeks, games in college, great games in in the NFL. But before we get to that, Grant, the Trinity Titans are going to state. Now, this was they beat the uh, we beat the defending state champions up in Velva. Um, They've got. They're they're a tremendous team. They were undefeated like us going into the going into the year. And let me tell you, man, the the week leading up to that, it could not have gone any slower. It was just like it took okay. forever to get to Saturday. Wake up, wake I and I actually was surprised. I actually slept pretty well for it being like this game. Um, mm-hmm. you know, our our kids are just so focused, so locked in. They don't you know they they knew what was at stake they were they were ready we felt like we had a good week but you know it's you're you're going into uncharted territory you don't it, it's mm-hmm. a little bit of an unknown you don't know how things are going to go because it's got to be settled in between the lines and you know it's about a 3 hour bus ride we <laughs> felt like 5 and then we get there we usually get to the school about 2 hours early we get there that felt like 4 hours we get to the field about probably 40 minutes to before we uh before kickoff that felt like an hour and a half Mm -hmm. we get to the game game kicks off and a credit to velva it was a heck of a it was it was like a hybrid squib onside kick type of type of deal where it just took a nasty hop guy tries to jump on it they recover it and it was here we go again because this was before i was coaching at trinity but Mm -hmm. They had some, some. There was something similar like this that happened in their other two semifinal games or in playoff games that we have lost, where it was just we get off to a just a terrible start, and it just snowballs, lose by mm-hmm. a bunch, and then w- they go down and score that first drive, and it's like all right, but you know, like I said, resilient bunch of kids we have. They came back. They answered the bell. They converted two fourth and eights on the for opening drive. We go down. We score. Oh, make wow. it seven eight. And then on the defensive side, um, we get a stop. They go for it on a fourth and two. We stop them. We go down and score. And we get to uh, we we're up. We're up twenty four to twenty four to eight. And they score. And we go down. And we get. They stop us right before the half is over. And this was from when I was a freshman. We were up against Fargo Shanley, 14 to nothing. And mm-hmm. we had a chance to go up 21, nothing. They get a goal line stand. They come back. And the, uh, um, and they, uh, say that, uh, and, um, end up losing that game. Mm-hmm. And, um, they come, they get the ball to start the second Velva gets the ball to start the second half. They go down, score, make it 24-20, and we go down. We take the ball. We go down and score. We get an interception. We go up 38-20, and I'll have to send you the highlights, and if you want to watch the game, I can send you the whole game because it was a fantastic (laughs) game. 
but you can definitely hear myself and the other two coaches that are up in the booth with me just hear us screaming and yelling in excitement for this game. Mm -hmm. And we score to make it 38-20. They go and score. And then we get we get we run the run a speed option over to the left side. Houses it. Oh nice. and it was it was got it to 45-26. And that was about four and a half minutes left. And it was that was finally where it was like, yes. This game's it, over. It finally was like, yep, this game is over. And the only other way like, that I could describe this was this is similar to how I feel when Michigan and Ohio State have played the last two years, where it was like the okay. game takes forever to get here. You yeah, wake yeah. up sun, Saturday morning. It's like, and I'm, I'm a fairly early riser. So it's like I'm sitting there standing around, and it's like just 10 o'clock needs to get here. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Mm -hmm. Then it gets here, and then you chew glass for the next four hours. And it was like, we're going to do that. And it was similar. I, I texted you after the game. It was, it was, uh, the, the RPO game we were running was fantastic. It was run power often. Well, and you, you know, that that's fun, especially, especially for those kids who put in the work in the summer. Um, you know, they see this, it's a goal. Um, it might seem far fetched at the beginning of the year. You don't know what it's going to take. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta go to a day of class, go to school, come have a good practice, go home, do your homework, do it all over again. And the hard work pays off. And, and now, now the fun begins because you get to go to the big dome in Fargo and play at the arena, um, you know, where the, where the Bison play. It kind of, you know, takes it back for me. Like when we were able to play at the Metrodome, you know, the, your goal is to get to the dome, uh, but now you're here, and the, but the work is not done. Uh, you know, one, one, one more game to go. And I hope you guys can, I hope you guys can get victory on Saturday or Friday, excuse me. Yeah, Friday. Yeah, absolutely. It here, but. Yeah, it was, it, it's been just an absolutely fun ride. I'm happy to be a part of it. And, um, you know, we play Kindred, a team that's looking for their second state championship in three years. Um, okay. And they've got a, they've got a division one player who's committed to Minnesota. They've got, they've got some really good athletes out on the edge, really good running game. You know, it's a really complete, complete team. And, um, it, it, I'm excited. It's going to be a, it's going to be a battle. Um, and just, you know, really, I, um, not, we, we won't, I won't get into the, uh, get into the game plan or anything, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, big, big, biggest messages is go, uh, you know, something coach Harbaugh always tells his Michigan teams is before each game is go, go play as hard as you can, as fast as you can for as long as you can and let the chips fall where they may. Mm-hmm. So then question for you, Dylan, um, last Friday night, uh, what, what was for dinner? And then two, will that be the team dinner this upcoming Thursday? Are you a little, a little so, baseball superstition? Well, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm superstitious. I, I do this more. I, I, I do this more as a tribute to a coach that I look up to and coaches my favorite college team, um, mm -hmm. coach, coach Jim Harbaugh, who does not believe you should be eating chicken the day before or leading up to the game because it's a nervous bird. You eat that. You're going to play nervous. You're going to coach mm -hmm. nervous. You're going to be nervous. You got to be playing confident. So no grant, I did not eat any chicken on Friday. Mm -hmm. I had a, uh, I, I, I had a, uh, I had a nice juicy ribeye that go. I, uh, I reverse seared. Um, and it was delicious. Uh, I'm not really sure. Cause we'll be going down Thursday night. It kind of just depends, but you know, th there will not be any chicken on my plate when we go and eat. Okay. If that's what you're asking. Yeah, we will not, I will be avoiding the nervous bird. I, I was making sure, um, you know, do, do me a favor. You know, the kids, they got to be focused. They should go get a nice dinner somewhere and st get in their hotel room and get a, try to get a good night's rest. But, um, God, what was that, that place on 19th Avenue, North Dillon in the same strip mall as Grand Junction. What was that Mexican joint called? Do you remember? Oh. It was absolutely fantastic. It's closed though now. I can't no. think of the name. Oh, yeah, it kidding. closed like a year after we graduated. Well, really? Yeah. That is. <laughs> and, uh, I, that's an that's an absolute shame because that was some of the best. But it's food. bugging me that I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, I don't. Rem I can't remember for the life of me. Because you you know exactly what building it's in. Yes. You know, yeah. It's next to. Um, but there is a Chipotle right next to the McDonald's. Um, by that same new? strip mall. Oh God! Yeah. I would have been. I would have been poor. Oh boy. 
<laughs> we had that. We had the one on South across from Shields. We still ate there a good chunk of oh, our. Yeah. Most of, most what, of 40, our Sundays were like, let's right? go to Chipotle. Yep. Yeah. Forty yeah. fifth, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. God, I would have been real poor had had a, that that one been there by the McDonald's. I tell you what, living in um living in Niskanen with with McDonald's in your back parking lot where I could me and Caleb could walk to it. It's a th- quick three minute walk. Back when you could get two McChickens, two McDoubles, and a medium fry for five thirty seven. God, that was fantastic. <laughs> oh, that, that was great. But we did. We now it's uh, now we're just uh, now we have to pay uh, seventeen dollars for uh, a two cheeseburger meal there. So it's 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 financially not worth it to go to McDonald's these days. It's not. It's just it's, it's not. I can't, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I I think it's been a couple especially of years for since seventeen dollars. If I'm going, if I'm spending seventeen dollars on a fast food place, I'm going somewhere where it's like I can get a little bit more bang for the buck. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll like gladly... McDonald's is good in the right sense, but yeah, not for seventeen dollars. Because if I'm going to McDonald's, I am picking out. I am going. People who are listening that are just going to be disgusted. Could look at me with disgust when they see what I order because yeah. I'm 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 just an absolute filth monster when it comes to that type of food. And also, uh, what could make it even worse is if the ice cream machine works. Yeah, no kidding. Because <laughs> you can never go wrong with a chocolate shake there. No, you can't. Um, but shoot, if I'm going to spend seventeen dollars on fast food or like just something quick in and out, hell, I'll go to Jimmy John's and I'll get two sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. That's much much better than whatever McDonald's has given me these days. Yeah, have you uh, have you ever watched the uh, the movie? Um, the founder on Netflix. Have you ever seen that movie is about it, the that uh, with McDonald's? Michael Keaton? Yep. I haven't seen that one. No. Okay. Well, it's not even on Netflix anymore. If you have Max, it's on. Or if you want to watch it with ads on Amazon Prime, I it's, do. Have uh, Max. It's actually pretty interesting. Uh, the, Michael Keaton's character kind of screws over the uh, the actual founders, but I don't want to you know completely spoil it. It is it, it's it's a really good movie. You should go watch it. Um, very very interesting, but. Kind well, of sad in in a sense. Um, so as you know, Ethan listens to Christmas music before Thanksgiving. Uh, the Christmas Correct. decorations are up in Ethan's apartment. He sent me a picture the oh. other day. So he is the he is the reason why we will have a crazy snow day here in in a couple of weeks or a couple of days. Um, so when that happens, I now have a movie I can add to the list to watch. Yeah, there, there you go. And uh, we are past the snow, thankfully. Hopefully, it looks like we've got high 50s coming up. Um, beautiful weather, beautiful week to practice outside for us. Um, now that we, uh, do you have a turf field you guys can go to and, and get? Yeah, used to we the can go to on? the. We so today we practiced at. Um, today we practiced at the college at the BAC where we, where we actually play our home games. So okay. we had that. Um, We've actually been conditioning inside so they get used to the get used to running indoors because it is a little bit different. So their lungs it's, it's, can, it's hotter. can adapt. It's harder to play. Yep. 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 So we've, we've done that. Um, and actually, so our the volleyball team is also number one in the state and they have regionals up in okay. Kildare, which is about 30, 30 miles north. So tomorrow we are actually going to be pra- practicing in Kildare, who also has a turf field. Um, okay. So there we'll have that. I and mean, we play on turf. We actually have a good number of games that we play on turf. So okay. I, I, that's not one thing to really, we've really worried about. Um, the last couple of t- days we've had some, some issues where we've had to practice later because of our, our, the field situation where we just had so much snow, it couldn't get it cleared off. Yeah. yeah. But, um, but we were, it was, it was fine. And, um, yeah, we're going to, I think we're going to practice at the golf dome in Bismarck on, on Thursday on the way to Fargo. So, okay. Um, and yeah, and then Friday, it's going to be uh Friday around, uh, noon central 11 mountain. It's going to be a uh, go time. So it'll it's be similar be to like in college, uh, college, you're playing that, that morning, that morning, first game of the day. Yeah, no, it's, well, it's better than having to wait till 7 PM. Like. Yeah, you know, here in Minnesota, when you got the big six A schools, where they're playing some semifinal games at seven forty five or, you know, nine thirty, back you know back in the day when they did all the semis, at at their Metrodome where they're just pumping out games left and right. Well, 
you know, the big guns, they get a start later and you're just kind of sitting around all day and just anticipation's killing you. You're like, oh, we got, we got to get going. Can this day get any slower? And then you start to overthink um, about some things. And when you're thinking, when you're playing, it's a disaster. So, no, it's nice to get up and, uh, you know, attack the day right away. Yeah, well, and th- that actually happened to us uh, in the quarterfinals is we actually, because um, as far as, like, permitting, it's like they're supposed to be at 1 o'clock local time is when games are supposed to kick off. Um, but since we share our home field with DSU, they mm-hmm. had a game on, they had a game Saturday afternoon and they'll always take priority because it's, it's technically theirs. So we ended yeah, up, yeah. we had to play, we had that play that we kicked off at six 30 at night, um, okay. which was fine. We, uh, we had, um, we had them come, we had the kids, they came and watched, watched a movie, um, kind of walked around, got some food where. You know, it wasn't where they were just all just sitting there doing nothing. Got them, yeah, yeah. got them something where they were getting focused because it is tough. And I, so when we had Zach on, when I, one of the first few times I actually reached out and talked to him is because on his podcast, the bench warmers, you could ask them questions. And I asked him, I was like, when NDSU would have to play night games, like what, what do you, what do they do during the day? And he talked about how they would have to go do like dynamic stretches and like they would be doing something just to break a sweat and keep that mind alert and focused. Okay. So the Bison, uh, the Bison, it, it is college basketball season as well, and the Bison get a uh, get a hard fought win in overtime in Kalamazoo, winning uh, eighty seventy six over uh, Western Michigan. So college basketball is underway, and uh, Ethan is also he's not here again tonight because he is he's serving a one one episode suspension for putting his Christmas decorations up early. And we do not play around here with that. If you put up your decorations before Christmas, you will before be forced to service before Thanksgiving. You will be forced to serve a suspension. I don't write the rules. I just follow them. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. <laughs> That's right. And uh, now let's uh, let's get into the uh, let's get into our our week week nine recap in the NFL here. And Grant, I'm going to throw a little bit of a a slider on this uh, on our surprise. Ooh. Surprise, disappointing, told you so team, because I think this one deserves, we, we just, we just talk about this. We, this is a mutual mm-hmm. decision here. Yep. Our, the surprise team unit, and we're going to go person this week yeah. is going to be Josh Dobbs for the Minnesota Vikings. Oh, I without, mean, without, what without can, question. What, what, what can't you say about this guy? The Eros, the astronaut who was traded, traded to the Vikings on Wednesday it was his first time taking snaps. They had to take snaps just so they could the lineman could understand his cadence. He didn't know half of the receivers' names and was learning him on, on the fly in the huddle. Kevin KOC was telling him what to do through the uh through the helmet. And all you know what he does? N- no one was gonna hold this game against him that if he didn't if if he was actually nobody thought he was even gonna play for that matter. And yeah. then he, Jaron Hall gets hurt, gets concussed, has to come in. No one was just like, let's just, you know, see if he can compete, make it close. But you know what he did? He has his first comeback win against the fourth best defense in the NFL by some st- statistic thing, PFF, which, you know, we don't take a lot of stock into. But when it's something like this, you know, we'll we'll we'll, we'll push aside our bias and, and use it to defend our, our argument. Well, well, when you're when you're barely in Minnesota long enough to have a cup of coffee and two glazed donuts, um, I I don't care if it's PFF, I don't care if it's ESPN, FBI, the Football Power Index, that's impressive. And and before the game started, KOC and his offensive staff go up to Josh and they're like, "Hey, what plays are you comfortable with with the terminology?" And he goes, "Oh yeah, any plays we installed this week, this week." So KOC's play sheet was cut down to probably about 15 plays. Oh, and and his best <laughs> running back blow, blew out his Achilles. And KJ Osborne left with a concussion more than likely. Yeah. <laughs> and they were already down without Justin without Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. Um it's it's truly incredible. I mean, this when Jaron Hall got hurt, let's be honest here. We all thought the game was over. This whole you know what? Play the game. Anything can happen. You got to keep fighting. No, let's let's cut the crap here. 
Um, Jaron Hall goes down. Dobbs gets to safety. Atlanta goes up 11-3. Let's be honest here. Everyone's thinking, uh-oh, it's going to happen again. It's Josh Freeman against the New York Giants 2.0. This is going to be a disaster. But <laughs> cr- credit to Josh Jobs and credit to KOC. He stuck, he stuck to it. He was resilient. He didn't quit. There's multiple times he should have been sacked in this game. Um, not only his touchdown, that fourth and, the fourth and seven on the last drive of the game. Even the first touchdown to Madison, he got out of some nice pressure there. It was just absolutely incredible to see. And the fact that he actually pulled this off and this Vikings team didn't um, didn't falter uh, w- when he came into that game, it just it speaks volume to them. It was it's truly remarkable. Maybe one of this might be almost more impressive than Baker Mayfield last year, or just just as impressive for what Baker did on Thursday against the Raiders. Well, and and I would argue that it is more impressive than be, for what Dobbs did because nobody ever really had coming in Josh Dobbs coming into the NFL. Anybody had really any high expectations or yeah. anything like that. Josh Dobbs was a tremendous college football player. He played a lot, which. That experience, I think people are finally coming to the light that the more football you play, the more season, especially at the quarterback position, you're going to be there. There's not a whole lot that you haven't seen. It's just your ability to process. Baker Mayfield was was the number one pick. And, you know, people can dispute or argue or like, yeah, he shouldn't have been was like, well, no, but. But he was, and he's he shown was. moments this year and times. He he won the Browns their first playoff game since you know bef- since they folded before left they left to Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, and so I mean, it's not like Baker May- Mayfield is some bona fide scrub to quote Stephen A. Smith. I yeah. mean, Baker Mayfield's a serviceable player and put up thirty-seven points against the Houston Texans yesterday. Well, and then also Baker Mayfield played three full seasons at Oklahoma. Yep. That's probably close to 1,300, 1,400 passing attempts. And then his his three years in Cleveland, the quick stint in Carolina. Baker Mayfield's seen almost every NFL defense you can throw at him. And also, you know, no against nothing against KOC, but Sean McVay's a Super Bowl winning coach and a two time conference champion. Anytime I got that guy in my headset, I'm feeling pretty confident that we can go down yeah. that we can go down and we can win this game. Yeah, absolutely. So, but again, Josh no, Dobbs, no shot, no shot against KOC. He is becoming an elite head coach in this league, and as we're seeing right now, Minnesota and Detroit are miles in miles above Chicago and Green Bay. The NFC North literally just got flipped on its head. For the longest time, people want it was it was Green Bay's division. Chicago, they're like the New York Knicks. They had history on their side, but they're they're a fraud of an organization. They'll have a good year once every seven years. Um, they, I think the I think the Bears are they're 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 worse because they have yeah. they they've won one Super Bowl and the last time before that they were actually worth anything was in the nineteen forties, where they yeah. still played with leather helmets. And there was only six teams. Exactly. You know, that's how the Packers got most of their championships. Hey, four Super Bowls, but 13 world championships. Yeah, when there were seven teams playing. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we have, we have to get our Packers shot in the uh, in on the podcast. At least one. Oh, um, just, 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 to be, just to Wisconsin shot. I mean, the Packers lose this weekend. I mean, uh, the Packers won, but the Badgers lose. So, once again, the state of Wisconsin is losers on this weekend. And the, um, and the baseball team just lost their lost their, head, manager. their uh, manager. Which and he that's went to probably the, a whole he, other. He went to the most hated rival. Oh, ab, ab, I know. And and the thing is, is like, and we're kind of going off on a tangent here, but I, I, I'm, I'm just like, I, I don't understand. And maybe some, I'll post this just so I can, like, I'm not trying to sound like a jack, jackass here, but like, yeah. what, what makes Craig Councils this such a great manager he's been to the nlcs one time and other than that they've been bounced out of the wild card in the playoff well i i'm and they were swept this year as the three seed at home yeah 
against an 84 win Diamondbacks team. Now, you could argue they went to the World Series and they got hot, but there's no way Milwaukee should have lost both of those games. At least win a game, for God's sakes. Yeah. So, baseball fans, if you're listening to this, please help us out and help understand what the hype around we gotta ask Council Dana. is. We got to ask Dana. Dana would know. That is that is a good question. Maybe I, I sh- we should call him right now. Hey, Dana, you're you're live. We're recording right now. What's the hype about Craig Council? And how do you feel about David Ross? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know they fired David Ross. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> uh, 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 news to me, they're like, Craig Council, new manager of the Cubs. What happened to David Ross? What happened? Yeah. I just... What a, and the Cubs locker room or clubhouse loved David Ross. They would yeah. go to war for him. What was part of their part of their only World Series? Oh, the, yeah, I mean he was at a home run in Game Seven. He was the backbone for that team. Yeah, but, but we, uh, whatever, we, we are still getting... have another hundred years before the Cubs win the next World Series. So <laughs> life is good. That's. That's right. Now let's try to get back on track here. And Grant, I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of too lazy to go and grab grab helmets for uh to uh, see who's going first or second. So since That's you right. went first last week, how would I go first this week? Um That's right. my my disappointing team of the week here is is going to be a game that I I had circle had my eyes on in, in a are they for who who's who of who is for real in this game? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, in, I'm going to go over to uh, the uh, crab cake land and go to the uh, the Seahawks as my disappointing team as a uh, in a 37-3 yes, yes. loss. Yes. They, they never got anything going. They 28 rushing yards, two turnovers, six first downs in the whole game. The defense mm-hmm. forgot how to tackle, and, and they let Baltimore run for almost three 300 yards. This is... You know, after last week, me hyping them up, putting them as my yeah. told you so team, they completely let me down. And now they are tied again in for first place in the NFC West. I still think they are a reasonable team. But if you're Pete Carroll, you have to be thinking of ways that you need to get the run game going, because that is yeah. what what that's how you, your offense is going to be successful, because Gino is not going to be the type of quarterback that can drop back 50 times a game and win you a mm-hmm. game. He needs to have a good running game, have some balance there where they have the safeties have to come up. The linebackers have to crash off, set up and set it up off of, off of play action. And to credit to the uh, credit to the Ravens, Mike McDonald, who knows, maybe he was, maybe he had all the uh, Seahawks signs or something. Former Michigan defensive coordinator. Whoa. Connor Stelling's got a new (laughs) job real quick. (laughs) That's right. He, maybe he did. I don't know. I mean, we, I mean, there, there's really nothing that hey, can. There's no, is, there's no holds barred on this podcast here. Where hey, you know, last you think, week we compared Taylor Swift to OJ Simpson, and now we're saying Connor Stallions is working oh, yeah. for Mike McDonald again. <laughs> hey, do you think? Do you think the Seahawks got caught up in the three-hour time difference? They had a few too many crab cakes. They were a little sluggish. Uh, you go to Maryland and you take down about a dozen crab cakes. DK Metcalf ain't gonna have a six-pack anymore. Uh, he's, he's he's gonna look he's gonna like look like us. He's going to – exactly. <laughs> He's not going to be able to catch a football with his abs because he doesn't have abs. Yeah. Have you ever had a crab cake? I have, actually. Have you? Are they are they good? They're, I've they're ne- very, never they're, had one. Yeah, they're are very they? good. Yeah, they're very good. Interesting. Um, okay. Totally. I haven't had – the people on the East Coast would hear this and they'd say you haven't had a real crab cake because you haven't had one from Maryland or Boston. But you've main. had you've had crabs before though, so it's kind of the same thing, yeah. right? Yeah, it's essentially just you know kind of <laughs> nice. I walked right into that one. <laughs> you, you you just kept talking like yeah yeah I, I, I've had I, crabs I, before. Well, it's, you know it's, it's, it's get it every it's, Tuesday. It's not a big deal. It, but what's funny is is <laughs> it, it didn't register, and then I saw you laughing, and it said crabs, and I was like, yep, better comb this one out here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> No, that was that was that was well done. That was well done. Um, Thank you. I have nothing else to say because it can't top that. <laughs> so, well, then um, I guess that makes it easy. Who is your disappointing team of the week? Well, you know, we kind of talked about the flip side of this game about how your quarterback has been there just enough time to get a cup of coffee. But I have to go to the Atlanta Falcons. How how do you not take an opportunity to absolutely bury this Vikings team once Jaron Hall goes out? And you know that Josh Dobbs has only been there since Wednesday. And here, here's my thing. 
in the last three first rounds pit in this draft, you go Kyle Pitts, Drake London, B. John Robinson. Where are the playmakers? I mean, how, it's, how the, like the their inability uh, to get the ball to them is unbel is unbelievable. Like we're gonna go with Janu Smith and Tyler Algier. Are you kidding me? Like I I really wish I had a list of the first round players Atlanta could have had in these last three seasons compared to the guys they have now who are not making a difference offensively. And also the N NFC South, a division up for grabs. It's a three team race. Uh, Carolina, they're they're dead. Uh, sick of forking them. Consider them cooked. You know the Falcons are right there with the Saints. Uh, the Bucks can't win a game. I mean, it's like the division is there to have. And it seems like the only thing Arthur Smith cares about is making sure his mustache looks good on national television, and not getting his athletes the ball in space. Um, who knows? Maybe Arthur Smith isn't a good head coach. Maybe maybe Derrick Henry and AJ Brown made him look good. Maybe he's not this offensive mind we make him out to be, because if he was, Bijan and Kyle Pitts would be better players. Drake London would be a stud, but I just I don't I don't see it. And to think roll with um Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke, like this it's just an embarrassment for this organization. Um so I'm I, I guess I just don't know how you don't capitalize on how the Vikings losing their starting quarterback. And then also Akers is out. KJ Osborne, Christian Derrissaw didn't was a late scratch. How? And then the amount of times they could have brought Dobbs down to the backfield. You paid Bud Dupree a one-year contract to do this. You have Calais Campbell. Ha, ha, it, it's unacceptable. It's 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 got to be maybe the worst loss in the NFL this year. Again, not taking anything away from Josh Dobbs because he earned this and he took it right out of the Falcons' heart. But how they don't finish this game is just truly unacceptable. Yeah, well, and the biggest thing with Arthur Smith is he do, he doesn't have a quarterback, hasn't had exactly. one since he's gone gone to Atlanta, and yeah. and part of it is though too is, um, you know you you got to find ways to develop them, but if if you don't and it's very evident in this league if you don't have a quarterback and you don't have like a a defense like the 2000 Ravens or the 2014 Seattle Seahawks, or the, the you're not going to win many games. Broncos in 15. No, no. Yeah. I just, yeah, I mean, how, how you let that happen to me is just absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. Well, and, and, and luckily and there's, this, this is a quarterback heavy, quarterback heavy draft. So maybe they, they can get one and find that quarterback of the future. But well, until dude, then, you know, call me crazy. You know what I think, you know what I think honestly might happen for some reason. I think Arthur Smith doesn't want to deal with a rookie. I could see him calling Chicago and bringing Justin Fields back home. <sighs> Bro, we don't need but, more Justin Fields in this but, league. Can't you see him doing it, though? Oh, I could. I could see that, but because I, I, I think the Bears, I mean, Tyson, Tyson Badgett is not is not the guy. Justin Fields is not the guy either. No, um, I no. mean, the Bear. who knows? The, Bear, the Bears will keep lying to themselves, and they'll pick up his fifth-year option and then try to sign him to a long-year contract. He'll have – some decent year or something, and and they'll be like, oh, we got to pay him big money. It's like Daniel Jones 2.0. Oh but, God, what a disaster that is. Yeah, but, but. I'm, I'm just saying, I could see the Falcons trying something like that, where Arthur Smith is that arrogant. He's going to say, look at all these playmakers I have. I'm going to make this work. Now that we finally have my guy, my quarterback. Yeah, that's but. just me. Let's go down to the uh, Told You So team of the week here. And Grant, now yes. back back to back picks here. Now, who is your yeah. Told You So team of the week? I, I feel like I have a good idea of where you're going to be going with this. Well, you know, you mentioned Daniel Jones and how the Bears are headed down that path. The New York Giants are my I Told You So team with how oh, inept they I are. Oh, I thought you were going to go somewhere different. No, nope. I'm just curious. Who did you think? Now that I already said the Giants. I thought you were going to go with the Dolphins. I, I strongly thought about it. I honestly did. But at the end of the day, they're still 6-3. and three. Um, Okay. They're leading, they're leading their division. Yes, I do. Now that you're branching it up, I do have serious questions about their offensive line, the ability to keep two upright, and then just two as a playmaker. When Tyreek isn't get, isn't when Tyreek isn't going, that offense isn't going. And, you know, the Chiefs, 
knew how to defend Tyreek because they saw how Bill Belichick defended Tyreek. You got to get in his face. You got to be physical with him and you cannot let him get a free release. Um, so yeah, there are some serious questions I have with the dolphins and it, it showed when they've played three legit teams this year, they're zero and three when they've played six minor league teams, they're six and zero. And you know, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see with the dolphins, but I, I thought about it, but it's, it's, I can't let the New York Giants slide another week. This this is unacceptable. That that Coach of the Year award that Brian Dable has in his office, he stole from Nick Sirianni last year. Sorry, Dylan, um, but that's <sighs> don't get is, me started on him. It is, uh, <laughs> yeah, that punchable face of his. Wow. Um, <laughs> but the Giants, they they have no weapons on the outside. They trade for an old aging tight end in Darren Waller. Um. They let Richie James, their second leading receiver, go last year after he had 56 catches. They have they have no offensive they have no offensive line. They have no playmakers. Daniel Jones is not the guy. And we saw this last year when they played the Eagles twice. They got their asses handed to them. And now Daniel Jones is hurt because his offensive line can't protect him. Saquon is just ruining his career there. Um, what, what, want to hear a surprise? Darren Waller's hurt again. He's going to, he's going to, you said he's feeling his hamstring from last year. I I wouldn't be surprised. That that dude goes down the steps wrong and pulls a groin muscle. Um, he's not going to be known as Darren Waller. Now he's going to be known as Kelsey Plum's husband. That's, I figured it out. (laughs) That's, and that's, (laughs) that's, that's saying something. Um, you know, they're just, they're so inept, a horrible offensive line. Wink Martindale has continued to get worse and worse as a defensive coordinator over these last couple of years. Cause his, the end Granted, of his you're, you're going to look pretty bad though. When Daniel Jones is the quarterback on, on, on your offense. So you probably not going to put you in too many good spots. Well, then, that, then that's their fault on their GM for having one good year and saying, Oh my God, we're in quarterback purgatory. Let's give him a four year, $160 million extension. You know, that's, that's bad management. Um, I had the Giants nowhere near the playoffs. Uh, they just, they look like a mess. They're just, God, they're, they're just an awful team. And it's always good when a team on the East coast is losing, especially the way they are. So um, yeah, New York Giants, my I told you so team. All right. Well, my told you so team is the, uh, is the Buffalo Bills. I was not high on them this year. I, I had them winning the division just based off uh based off of the uh just based off the way I thought the division was gonna play out. I f- still feel Josh Allen is a really good player, but and the way their schedule's set up. But right now they're about to enter into the teeth of their schedule and it's gonna mm-hmm. get ugly. They are five and four right now. They are currently sit out of the playoffs. Yeah. And Josh Allen he you know, I just praised him a little bit earlier, but he is a turnover machine. I think that's partially because he knows he has no running game and no help outside of Stephon Diggs. They're, the mm-hmm. rest of his receiving core is nowhere to be found. Gabe Davis is hurt. Uh, Dalton Kincaid looks like he could be a nice player, but nice player. he got d- dinged up last night. The offensive line is a mess. They, the running game, non-existent, like I said. And then the defense can't stop anybody. Now, this, yeah. par- this is... Mostly due to injuries, they cannot get pressure on the quarterback with uh, Milano out, and then uh, Von Miller still coming back, and they lost somebody else who I can't think of. But um, you know, they traded for Roswell Douglas, but you're you're not going to win games with a out with a middle of the road cornerback when you can't get pressure on him because because he because when they have to cover for that long, some good quarterbacks, when you're going to, if you're planning on making a deep run, like the Buffalo bills are, you're going to face Pat Mahomes. You're going to face Joe Burrow. You're going to face Trevor mm-hmm. Lawrence. All of those guys are going to pick you apart if they have time to throw. Oh, a hundred percent. And I'm in and, and the, the, the bills are a team. I also considered, or they, they, I consider them in my disappointing team. I'm sorry, because who is this Sean McDermott calling this defense? He's sitting back in zone. He's letting teams go up and down the field. Where's the guy in Carolina? Where Where's the guy when he was in Philadelphia getting after it, um, you know, bringing pressure, um, putting 
you know, other teams in uncomfortable situations, who's coming, who's not coming. It's like he just knows that my secondary is garbage, so to protect them, I'm just going to sit back and play this zone and let teams dink and dunk me. Leslie Frazier's gone, but it looks like Leslie Frazier's still on that sideline for Buffalo. It's just, you know, it's unacceptable. And then for their, their GM to not upgrade the running game or the wide receiver position for these last three years, eventually Josh Allen's going to get worn out and it's going to catch up to him. And it's happening already. Um, you know, luckily they're in a division that I think is somewhat winnable. They still have to play the jets again. I don't know if Rogers is going to be healthy in that game and if the dolphins can figure their thing out, but right now Dylan, the, the bills are outside of the playoffs. And if they don't, if they don't get this thing figured out, it's going to look real bad because they just gave their GM and Sean McDermott extensions to start this year. Yeah. And they have to, they have to figure out some, we've begged them to take a running back in the first round these last two years because yeah. they, they, they cannot run the ball. Their best running option is Josh Allen, who is still, I, I say he is one hit away from, from being Cam Newton. And yeah. I, I hope it doesn't happen. Cause I, I like watching Josh play, but man, he, well, dude, he does not do himself remember, any favors. He's, he's had to turn himself into Superman again. Remember last year in the first round, I think me, you, and Ethan all had Brees Hall going to the Bills. Mm-hmm. And he I think last fun. year we all had him taking a running back too. Yeah, I can't exactly. remember who it was, but um I can't I'm drawing a blank. Was it, on I that. think it was Jameer Gibbs. I think we all had Jameer Gibbs going there. It was it was Jameer Gibbs. Yes. We, we this and especially back to Brees Hall, he will be their worst nightmare for the next ten years. And I know he wasn't able to do much in that first game, but he had that long run. And if his conditioning was better or if he wasn't coming off a torn ACL and a torn meniscus, he takes that ball, that that carry to the house. Uh, sorry, but James Cook is not the guy. Um, and it's just not helping your franchise quarterback, who you gave over $200 million to, is a failure on the organization. It's un- Yeah, and we'll see if the Bills can figure it out, but – we will uh, we'll go down to the college ranks for the uh, week ten college our college football team of the week Ooh. here and I'm I'm up and I'm gonna go with the winner of my game of the week last week I'm gonna go with the Alabama Crimson Tide. No. This might be Nick Saban's best coaching job coming off losing the number one pick. Our people were arguing the number prior two pick, to the or three 20, pick and the number three pick may a team that by many people and ourselves included said they underachieved last year this year, not really sure what was going to happen. Lose to Texas in week two felt like they were destined for an eight and four season. And what have they done since Texas? They've just continuously reeled off wins, gotten better and gotten better each week. Jalen Milrow, take a bow young man. This guy has, he heard all the, he got benched after the Texas game and and, and I'll add Tommy Reese into this, figuring out and designing an offense around Jalen Milrow's skill set to help mm-hmm. him be successful. Um, Alabama, they were down 28-21 in the third quarter. And then they go and reel off 21 straight points to win 42-28. The get stops when they had to. They were able to force uh, Jaden Daniels into a turnover. Um, and um, the LSU defense unable to stop anybody. Um, Alabama, Jalen Milrow has been throwing the ball. He's been efficient. And the big thing with him, zero turnovers this game. And I said in the preview, it's going to come down to which quarterback doesn't turn the ball over. Jaden Daniels always is, is always good to give you one, at least, at least one a game. And so, so is Jalen Milrow, but he didn't do it this game. And now Alabama, all they got to do is they got to beat Charleston, Southern Kentucky and Auburn all games that they are very winnable and they will be Mm -hmm. sitting with one loss in the sec championship facing Georgia with a chance to get into the playoff. And I will say this, if Brock Bowers is still out with that tight rope ankle surgery, I think Alabama wins that game. Ooh, there that, that, that is the bold prediction of the podcast here. It's bold. It's bold. And there's a huge if, it, but it, if number 19 is back, the dogs get that win. And then who probably with that win, they'll take them to the number one overall spot because they're undefeated. Um, but I guess that, that team in Ann Arbor, Michigan, still has to play Ohio State and Penn State. And 
whatever godforsaken high school team comes out of that other division in the Big Ten. <laughs> hey, Jesus you know, Christ. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the funniest part I saw about um, – uh, who did Northwestern play this week, last week? They produced the most uh, soybeans in the country as a state. What, my what state sister, is that? My sister graduated with a master's uh, degree from this university. Oh, huh. Yeah. Interesting. It's but a, the, it's the former I saw a capital. Of tweets that said that uh, a couple of tweets that said that the uh, this the game at Wrigley will uh, there will be games baseball games higher scoring than that and there will be next year. Dude, there there was this past year there was like ten other baseball games that had more than seventeen runs scored. <laughs> but hey, Northwestern covered, so that's all that matters. In the under in the under hit. And the under hit. And the under hit. 29 and a half. It's like just so ridiculously low that it's. And it would have been the funniest thing ever, too, had that game gone into overtime and the over hits <laughs> because it goes into overtime. Oh, oh. That, is, that is a game, though, where they should move. The, they should go to the high school rules for overtime where they go up to the 10 yard line instead of the 25. Oh, my God. Yes. That, that would have been unwatchable. Oh, thank God we didn't have to. But oh, who is uh, who is your college football team of the week? You know, Dylan, I'm going to stick to the trend you just started here, uh, the team from the game of the week. I'm going to go with the Oklahoma State Cowboys. It was it was the last Bedlam game. You could tell it looked personal for Mike Gundy and his players. And, uh, you know, they got up early. Oklahoma came back. They got a lead. But Oklahoma State, they just they didn't quit. And, uh, you know, at the end of the game, they got to stop in the red zone when they needed to. Questionable non-pass interference, pass interference call. But what do we say all the time on this podcast? Hey, what the ref call? Absolutely. So the ref said no flag. So sorry, Dylan Gabriel. Sorry, Brent Venables. Uh, nothing there for you. So you got to kick, kick a field goal instead of the touchdown. And then when Oklahoma had a chance to win the game, like, you know, a minute 50 left. And they need to go seven. I think it was what, 75 yards, 70 yards. Well, they don't have to worry about going fast. That's their normal offense. Um, you know, big play on first down, but Oklahoma State bowed down, and they got to stop on fourth down. And like I said last week, they are now in the driver's seat to play Texas in the Big 12 title game because they have the three new schools in the Big 10, or Big 12, excuse me, the rest of the year in Houston, BYU, and UCF. And Oklahoma State should win all those games. So they're going to they're gonna end up the year probably 10-2, and two, after an absolute disastrous year that was last year, you know, credit Mike Gundy for kind of retooling this roster a little bit in the transfer portal and getting Oklahoma State back to Dallas second time in three years. Ollie, Ollie Gordon, baby. Mm-hmm. And, and a, a, a typically air raid system just looked at his roster and said, what do we do well? We run the ball. We're going to we go downhill yeah. and we're going to make Ollie our, our focal point. And we're just we're gonna ride him, and you know, after the uh, after losing to South Alabama 33 to seven, everybody was saying this is it for Mike Gundy. This is time for them, oh, him and Oklahoma State to part ways. And what mm-hmm. has he done since? He's just gone gone on a winning streak. So, hat tip your cap off to Mike Gundy. You you never you should never doubt a man with a mullet. No, um, like. Um, I think was it Spencer Lee or God, what Iowa wrestler said, you know, you can win. Um, I can't remember the exact line, but it was something like you can win a national championship in a year, but having a great mullet is a lifestyle and it'll be with you forever. <laughs> That's right. So, That's something right. along the lines and, like that. And uh, let's go down to the, uh, our NFL week 10. Uh, game of the week here, Grant. Who 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 do you got for your week ten game of the week? Well, let's be honest here. Real, real, real bad week at the NFL. Um, with the Chiefs, Eagles, and Dolphins all on a bye. Uh, not not a whole lot going for us, but I, I'm gonna go the early window, twelve central, um, eleven Mountain Time for our friends, uh, Mountain Dickinson. And another team that has to travel across three time zones. I'm going to go the San Francisco 49ers against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Ooh, good choice. That was it. That was one I had down. Mm-hmm. Jacksonville, they won uh, five. Was it five in a? I think five, four in a row. 
right now they're sitting they're sitting at um no yeah five five, in a row. five five they've in a row. won five in a row because they started they've won one five two. five in a row they're six and two they're feeling um they're playing real confident I think they've kind of calmed down from the beginning um season kind of lull they had where I think they listened to the media a little too much Travis Etienne looks like he's he's balling out right now Trevor Lawrence is feeling comfortable. And then this this defense, this pass rush for Jacksonville is really getting after it with um, Josh Allen and Trayvon Walker playing against against the Niners. And what are the Niners going to have from a health standpoint? They're coming off their bye also. Is Trent going to be back? What about what about Debo? How's McCaffrey's oblique? Um, just it's a big game with San if San Francisco because San Francisco can't afford to go five and four because then the chatter is really going to start. You know, you lose four straight games, including your bye. Uh, you're probably not leading your division after this anymore. Is Jacksonville are they legit? Are they a legit team? You know, they had Kansas City at home earlier this year, and they scored nine points. You get the Niners at home again. Um, can you win a big game at home and say, hey, you know what? We're seven and two. We we got the same record as Kansas City and Baltimore. Um, don't forget about us. So, kind of on a week uh, week. Week week of games. My game of the week is Jacksonville and San Francisco. Yeah, great choice. That was one I also had down as uh, potentially my game of the week. But similar to um, – but I'm, I, I think this is kind of a, a under the radar looking at these games because you got Browns-Ravens um, playing for a uh, spot in the – for first place in the AFC North. Okay, uh, that's a good game. That, that is a good game. Viking-Saints, who would have thought? Low key good game. Chargers Lions, two teams you're not really sure. It, it it could be an ugly. I think that promises to be a good game. Uh Commander Seahawks. That might be just one of those like oddly oddly, oddly entertaining good, games. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I mean the Sunday night game, we get a doozy of Jets Raiders. Ooh, <laughs> that might that might be a game that it's so bad. It's so bad that it's actually kind it's of good. so bad that it might be good, yeah. Or uh, or or Colts Patriots right away in the morning. Oh <laughs> God! Ten years ago, that was the game of the year, and even two years ago when they played on that Saturday night. Now they're putting those poor teams in Germany, um, and we're going to introduce American football to the Europeans with this with those two teams. But hey, <laughs> Gardner Minshew's got a hell hell of a haircut, and hopefully he wears his jorts. Yeah, that's right. And uh uh yeah, that 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 game is in Germany. Um and uh, mm-hmm. uh we also have Packers Steelers, also another game that might be so bad it might it might be okay to watch. Oh god. But my game game of the week is I'm going to go up to the uh, up to the Queen City, which fun fact, Grant Dickinson has also been nicknamed the Queen City. I'm not sure why it was nicknamed the Queen hmm. City, but it, it that they've uh, they've referred to the Dickinson as the Queen City, so we'll go up to the Big Queen City in Cincinnati, where the Bengals take on the Texans. Now C.J. Stroud is coming off a stellar performance. He's building off of his uh, his strong rookie year, 470 yards, five touchdowns, helping lead my fantasy team to a victory alone with 41 mm-hmm. points, uh, finding Tank Dell late. Um, and and the Bengals just keep humming along. They since starting mm-hmm. the year off, did they start the year off zero and three? No one, one three. And, well, they, yeah, starting they the year won, off one and three. They they won week three against the Rams. You're right. Okay, and yeah, that's right. It was the Thursday night game, and all they have done is four win f- one four straight. The offensive line is, seems to be humming along. They keep utilizing Joe Mixon, and. The defense is going to face a tough test in C.J. Stroud. Is Lou and this is a this is one where you want to keep an eye on the coordinators. Is Lou Lou Anarillo is is I I that's I guess a tough Amarillo. last name to say. Or Anar- yeah, Amarillo. The, the, to Tony he's Robert, a really good B coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, is he going to do some things that's going to try to uh, trick C.J. Stroud? How is he going to hand handle those things? Some try to move some get some get him confused bait him into a couple of interceptions, a couple of turnovers. If he's able to do that and the Bengals keep rolling, because as of now, all four NFC, AFC North teams are in the, are in the playoffs as of the today, dance. if the season were to end today. But 
I think this is, and this could potentially be a first round playoff matchup. Are you saying like a two seven matchup? A two seven, like three, a three six, three six, four five. Probably more, yeah, probably more three six. I think so too. Three or you know, if the Bengals get hot, they could easily be the two seed. Almost like which they, like it they, seems like, like they, they, they just keep yeah. cl- chipping along and uh, well, you know, they got but they got to catch Baltimore. They do. They're only they're only a game back. Well, aren't they two? And, didn't they lose to Baltimore? And, they, and, they, and, and that's a that's the Thursday night game next week. Actually, is Bengals oh, Ravens? Oh, good, a good Thursday night game. Holy shit! Yeah, I, I that in Baltimore that game is going to be a bloodbath. Oh God! It. I mean, it almost that almost makes this Thursday night game somewhat worth it, knowing we have something to look forward to. Yeah. I don't because I don't know who plays this week on Thursday. It's the it, Bears oh, and the oh, gosh, Panthers. Yeah. yeah, we we deserve this. We deserve that <laughs> we deserve Thursday this. Thursday night game. <laughs> I mean, that game that was at Wrigley Field on Saturday might be better than this Thursday night game. It might be. I well, luckily I'll be on a bus, so I won't have to oh. watch a whole lot of it. So, oh, dude, um, dude, I'm not doing well thinking about that. And you're gonna watch it no matter what. It, you know what? We gotta, we gotta be positive. This is a mirror oh. positivity podcast. You know, we hope the oh game, God. the teams are so bad, it's good. Oh, and it will be. It will, it will challenge Denver, Indianapolis last year for worst Thursday night game of all time. What, what do you over under on turnovers here? I'm gonna say, put it at like a seven. Oh, that's a little high. Um, I'll say, uh, how about four and a half? Four and a half. Okay. And I'm taking the over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. There might be four turnovers on one team. Like, this could get this gross. Oh, God. This is going to take football back 20 years. Yeah. 50, this is 50 where teams, when, the, when these teams are so bad, they should just be forced to run, run the wing tee. I agree. But, and a, uh, let's go down to the college ranks here where, uh, you don't see a lot of wing T anymore, but that was where if you were to watch football, that's uh, a high level football. That's where you would see, see the wing T, but that Grant, is who is your college football uh, game of the week here in week 11? Uh, you know, Dylan, I, I, I could take one game, but I'm going to leave that one for you um, to make it personal. Who knows? Maybe you'll have a You're peanut a butter and jelly while this game is going on. Um. Sorry, while well, your game is going on, you have yourself a Schmuckers, uh, uncrustable, <laughs> by the way. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Georgia Ole Miss, and I think this has the potential to be an absolute shootout. Because if there's one offense in this country that will go blow to blow with anyone, it's Ole Miss. And Georgia's defense has been had good moments this year. They've had some okay moments, and I just. I'm excited to see Lane Kiffin um, try to bring this t- show on the road. You know, they upset LSU earlier this year, you know, in the Grove. Uh, they lost They lost to Alabama. And has Ole Miss lost another game? Or I, I don't think they have. They um, – but I, either way, I think I think this is going to be a high-scoring game. It's going to be an entertaining game. And, and I think this has potential – to where Carson yeah, Beck they've just lost his, to Alabama, just lost to Alabama. So I, I think this is a Carson Beck um, show out game where if he can go blow to blow with Zach Dart in this Ole Miss offense, maybe Carson Beck deserves an invitation to New York as a Heisman Trophy finalist. Yeah, um, he, he's quietly put together a really yeah. good, really good season. Really good uh, season. Could have been overshadowed by Brock Bowers and, yeah. and that defense, but um. Yeah, he's he's put he's looked in like he is he's he's the guy. And also just another um something about it, man, but with Sanford Stadium is loud and rocking on Saturday afternoon there in Georgia. I don't know if there's a better stadium in college football. These Bulldog fans are gonna be absolutely electric. They're gonna have their shoulder pads with the spikes on. Everybody's going to be, be uh, barking at fans. Those... They're going to be barking. They're going to have the turnover belt on, the turnover shoulder pads. 
they're gonna their their whole body's gonna be painted red. They might throw a bottle of mustard at Lane Kiffin just cause, because they hate Tennessee that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we got CBS on the call. It's Brad and Gary. It just it feels right. The SEC in November. Give me Ole Miss Georgia. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Can never go wrong with SEC in the South. Which I've so my bo- boss was just down in Nashville for his for his birthday. And uh, yep. Auburn was playing Vanderbilt. And we've oh. always wondered why Vanderbilt is in the SEC. And I figured out why. It's it's so the fans in the SEC have a place to go where it's like their taco bye week where, you know, they're going to win. They're going to go yeah. get to visit a very cool place in Nashville. Go go eat some hot Nashville hot chicken. Yeah. Go, go, go down Broadway. Maybe pick up some Broadway girls. It, it 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 just makes too much sense. That that that's the only reason why Vanderbilt is still in the SEC. It's just well, so it SEC. gives fans an extra, a nice vacation and and a win. Well, and also just for academic purposes, the SEC needs a school that actually is a school. Um, I know the University <laughs> of Florida is also a good school, but let's be honest here: nobody gets a good education in Alabama or LSU. <laughs> yeah, come on the university of arkansas they don't go to class there what do they do they, they teach their kids how to call pigs um auburn nobody knows about auburn besides the people of auburn i mean come on now south carolina that that place is a whole um tennessee it hasn't been the same since 98 so they just need the, the sec needs an academic school so it can actually look like they're student athletes and Vanderbilt was the only a sacrificial time, lamb. The the most the only time Tennessee's been relevant the last twenty years is when Big Cat went there and played with uh, play won a national NCAA, title there on yeah. NCAA football. Yeah, that was the last time Tennessee was relevant. Is that's the most notoriety they got was that is playing in a national championship game on Xbox. So, <laughs> hey, but, what, what do Tennessee fans do after they win a national title? They turn the Xbox off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but um let's go to the uh my my college game of the week here and that it, it's pretty obvious here um we're gonna go with with michigan penn state michigan goes to happy valley big noon kickoff big noon saturday game game of the week is going to be at 11 central and you know winner of this game is going to be in the driver's seat for the uh for the big 10 west or big 10 east the uh, the Big Ten West, who they did. Well, just, even if Penn you, State, you, even if Penn State wins, they still have that loss to Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. Michigan, if they win this, I, I'm I'm really liking their chances. Uh, chances of of even if they were to lose to Ohio State, which is still two weeks out, so yeah. not not going to focus on that one yet. They, I still like their chances to get in, but um, it, it, it's a, it's a big game, and Michigan. Um, coming off the bye, took care of, did what they do. They've always, they've done all year, just dominated Purdue from start to finish. And, you know, even with all the distractions of sign stealing, did they, did they not talk of Harbaugh being suspended? Going to the NFL. I, yeah. Going uh, and Michigan's just got the, got the blinders on. They've been living in the black hole and their main focus has been, but whoever they play and just taking care of business, it's similar to that. You're going to go be playing in front of a raucous crowd right away in the morning. Um, This is Penn. People are saying this is Penn state's best team. And however many years, a lot of people were picking Penn state to win. This is an elimination game. Michigan could knock Penn state out of the playoff with a win. Um, Mm -hmm. and, And the big keys for that is they, they need to shut down their running attack. Penn state's running attack of uh singleton and the, other running back whose name is escaping me, but, um, and, 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 and make Drew Aller beat you, um, you know, in the, uh, in, in the one time he's faced a, he's struggled. He's been very up and down all year. Um, it seems like he struggled against Indiana. He struggled against Iowa for a while. Um, did not have a great game against Ohio state here, but he's going to be playing at home. Um, it's uh, the other running back is uh, Catron Allen. Um, be able if if they're, Michigan is able to keep them in check and hold them, and because I don't think Penn State has has enough explosiveness on the outside to where they can really hurt Michigan. 
they shut down Allen and Singleton. I really like Michigan's chances on Saturday. I, I agree, Dylan, and I'm I'm feeling bullish on Michigan here. I'm not going to make a crazy prediction to make you feel upset or jinx them, but <laughs> I'm just going to say this. I, I really like the Wolverines in this game. I, I think Penn State is an overrated team. I don't think they're as good as people hype them up to be preseason. And for about three or four days, I low-key thought Penn State might be this team, but then I realized James Franklin is still their head coach. And who they are is a 10-2 and two program who loses to Michigan and Ohio State every single year. And even watching Penn State in their whiteout game this year, had the team they played had somewhat of an offense, they would have lost that game. And it showed because... I think the team that they played in their whiteout game has a better defense than Ohio State, and Penn State's offense couldn't do anything. The difference is, is Ohio State has an offense, and they're able to keep their defense fresh and keep Penn State on the field. And Penn State lost that game, and they, they, they not only did they lose that game, they look lost on the field. Um, and I, 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 Michigan is so big and so fast up front on both sides of the ball. I think they're just going to lean, lean, lean. Lean on Penn State, and eventually Penn State's just going to fall. Yeah, I, I think this is a big game for Donovan Edwards. Last year, he had a breakout game. I think this is another game mm-hmm. where Michigan, he hasn't had the year that he, by standards, he would like, but the guy, he doesn't care. He knows that when his number is going to be called and when he had big games with, against Purdue in the Big Ten Championship, again, the two runs he had against Ohio State, when the mm-hmm. – when the game, the stakes of that game are raised. He rises up highest. to that occasion. I think, I think this is another opportunity for Donovan Edwards to do that. Um, they found they they were able to get him the ball a couple of times, catching the ball out of the backfield. Um, I, 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 I really like like Michigan's chances in this game. Um, but you know they got to play the game. I'm not gonna. Um, I, I feel good, but just got to go out there and play it. Play uh, like same same message to the Titans as to the Wolverines. Play as hard as you, you know, can, as long as you as it. fast as you can for as long as you can. I'm gonna say it for the record, Dylan. Michigan oh by two tutties, two touchdowns. Okay, there you go. You heard it here first. Grant said I, it, so I don't have I'm, to. I'm sticking to it. Michigan by two scores. So, all right, there there it is. And I guess let's uh, let's put a bow on this show. Holy cow, we've been recording for an hour and ten minutes, and it does not seem that we've been. Mm-hmm. recording that long it seems like it's been 30 minutes but you know this has been a this has been a good episode here um let's let's finish finish strong and uh grant what what, what do you got for us for curveball of the week so thanksgiving's coming up here in a couple weeks and you know everyone else knows um it's the most it's the one day of the year where you can eat like an absolute hog and not feel bad about yourself where it's actually encouraged to eat way too much and make sure you got your old stretchy pants on there. Um, But with that, Dylan, you know, the Thanksgiving meal, there's so much for you to choose from. Here's my one question. If you had to take away one item from the Thanksgiving day menu, what are you taking away? Ooh. Um, I'm trying to think here. You know, that is a, that is a phenomenal question here, Grant. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not going to be any any desserts because oh, no. pecan pie, pumpkin pie, yep, all of it I want. I'm going to eat it. Um, you know, last year was the first time we had I had mac and cheese at a at it. Um, that was because I made it because um, recurring guest, one of our favorites, uh, Mike Zier, t- told me that I can't be a freeloader. So, of course, I went out and I I made some I made some baked mac and cheese. Uh, it was a hit. Um. You know, for me though, and I, it's not that I don't like, cause I'm, I'm a pig. I, I pretty much eat anything and, you know, the ham, the turkey, um, last year, my cousin, cousin's wife brought a, uh, bacon wrapped, uh, backstrap, deer backstrap, which was f- incredible. It was perfectly done. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we've had prime rib. Um, you know, the mashed potatoes, the stuffing, like just, I'm, I'm just getting excited thinking about this. Yes. Um, but you know, if I had to choose one and I, I still eat these too, but you know, that's like, yeah, you know, whatever I would have to say, it'd be either cranberries or sweet potatoes. And I'll probably just say cranberries 
because I, I I do like sweet potatoes, but yeah, the the cranberry cranberry sauce I I can do without. See, I'm I'm kind of a cranberry stan, but you know it's not it's not important, you know, for the meal. But uh, in honor of Matthew Perry, uh, rest in peace, by the way, which is chanberries yep. are staying this year. The chanberries, <laughs> <laughs> which uh, I, I I love I love the. Uh, Yep. I love the uh, I love the uh, the Friends tribute. R.I.P. Matthew mm-hmm. Perry. Also, yep. R.I.P. Bob Knight. But which I do have a story to share about uh, about Bob Knight. Um, mm-hmm. once you're done here, I for, I forgot to bring that up, um, earlier in the show. But I guess I for me since the Chanberries are staying at least at least for this year, the Cranberries are staying. I think the one thing I can maybe go away with, not because it's bad. But because I have so many other options to get a whole bunch of carbs and such in there, is I think the stuffing's got to go. What? Yeah. Whoa. That is hey. that is some that is I I, I you, this is the second some, week in a row that the, on this podcast I'm I'm speechless. I don't I I don't know what what I should I punch you through the through my through the computer do i mute you like what, no, what, what the I, stuffing I, no grant I, this is like one of the best parts well this is like my real, favorite meat part of the meal you got to realize this if if since something's got to go it's something something good is gonna have to go and i can i can eat the turkey um i can have a whole bunch of mashed potatoes i'm a big green bean casserole kind of guy so that that can oh, yeah. stay you know, you got you got your bun, the buns on the side, like you said, maybe a sweet potato, um, and then the copious amounts of pecan pie and ice cream that I'm gonna have. Unfortunately, something good has to go, and like I said, for me, I just, I guess, unfortunately, the stuffing gets the axe. Um, wow. So, yeah, something's got to go. I, unbelievable. <laughs> you would choose sweet potatoes. Oh, overstuffing. You need to be medicated. I and something's got to go. I I don't know. I'm I'm questioning this friendship here that your your stuffing has to go. I mean, there's so many other things you could say. Like, like there's got to be some just absolute garbage salad that you just got to throw out because it's not a health a day you're supposed to eat healthy. I well, mean, let's be honest. Oh. If there's if there's a salad at the Thanksgiving table, it's it's covered in ranch and cheese and God knows what and some other things. So it's it's not even a healthy option. So let's let's not waste our time and pretend that that's there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, but I, I'll I'll get rid of the stuffing. Okay. Well, uh, I don't know how I how I come back from that, but um, you know, Bob Knight did just pass away recently. Um, one of the greatest basketball coaches of all time. A lot of people that uh, didn't did not like him was not popular by some people, but you know, I, I I've learned is that if if the media didn't like him, you can't you got to take that with a grain of salt. You go and mm-hmm. you go and listen to former players the way they talk about him, they swear by him. Dan Dockich, whose opinions you know they kind of bounce on and off the wall, but you know, he talked about, you know, how much, how, how he just prepared him and got guys ready where, um, was he hard on you? Did he push you as hard as he, um, did he maybe go overboard at times? Probably, but he, he got the best out of you. Um, his former players swear by him. You could see it when he came back to assembly hall for the first time since he got fired, how much those, the, those players from that 76 team loved and adored him. Um, but, um, I, I have one Bobby Knight story. Cause I don't know, Grant, if you knew this, but I, I actually got a chance to meet Bobby Knight and it was, it was an interesting story. So he was golfing in Dickinson and, um, my dad and I, we were just up there one night, we were practicing on the chipping green and we go up there and we start talking to the, the bus driver. He's like, and he's like, oh, yeah, you can uh, you you want to go meet him? Yeah, it was him and Jay Billis and a bunch of other people. And sure enough, we the we walk up there and Bobby Knight sitting in the front row 
just sitting there and it's like, whoa, like mm-hmm. it was like starstruck, like just I'm like, hey, coach, I'm Dylan. And I'm like, I was wondering if I could get a picture. Yeah, let's hurry up, though. It's like, oh, OK, <laughs> yep. <laughs> May have had a brown streak in my pants, but got a picture, talked about him and he talked about how he loved coming to North Dakota, uh, how he would come hunting here. And then my dad talked about how he loved watching his 70s the 1976 teams and his teams in the eighties. Um, but that, that, that's my Bob Knight story is that Bob, Bob Knight yelling at me to hurry up, which <laughs> that's what, and, and I'll, I'll have to share the picture here, but he was a lot more excited to take a picture than he lets on in the picture. But that, uh, that's my Bob Knight story. I had, I, I had to share. So that's funny, <laughs> but yeah, so that concludes episode 103 here of the Three Guys Talking About podcast. We'll have the segments of the show out Friday. Um, check us out on all of our social medias, uh, X, Instagram, TikTok, uh, 3GTV podcast. You can ch- uh, make sure you go follow us and like and subscribe there. Uh, YouTube and Facebook, Three Guys Talking About podcast. Um, go follow us and send us a like there. And if you like the show, leave a review on uh, wherever you wherever you listen to your podcast. And we'll be back next week with Ethan and Tack. We'll probably do our final four predictions and hopefully uh, discussing a victorious Trinity Titans. So with that, we will talk to you next week.